Okay, so here we're going to go over division with fractions, the often dreaded topic of many a middle school and above students. Um, I think students of all levels look at this and say, oh, I think I remember you flip something and multiply something else or something like that, and uh, what do I do? Well, we're going to talk about the, the algorithm here, and then we're going to talk about why this makes sense. So, if we're taking a number like A, and we're dividing it by 1 over B, the basic algorithm you'll see is to say, well, that's equal to the same thing as the first number times the reciprocal of the second. So that means, of course, that I flip that second fraction here and then multiply. The key, of course, is to flip the second fraction and not the first. And and that's often, I think, frustrating for students. We'll talk about why that makes sense. And let's look at two examples, and then we'll go on. So how does this actually work? Let's say we're taking 5, and we're dividing it by a half. Well, our first number is A. We leave it alone. Multiply by the reciprocal of the second number. So instead of 1 over 2, we get 2 over 1. And now, how do we do this? Well, when you multiply fractions, you just multiply right across. And this is like 5 times 2, which is 10, over, well, you can think of this as 5 over 1, so it's 1 times 1. And our answer is just 10 over 1, which means 10 divided by 1, or 10. Okay, so the answer is 10. And then we're going to look at, I don't know, let's say 6 divided by a third. Well, using this algorithm, we keep the first number and multiply it by the reciprocal of the second. Right? We flip it. So... That becomes what? Well, let's rewrite 6 as 6 over 1. 6 times 3 is 18. 1 times 1 is 1. 18 over 1 is 18. Okay. So why does this algorithm make sense, and what is division of fractions really asking? So let's go over these two examples, but let's use logic this time and forget the algorithm. So why does 5 divided by 1 half equal 10? How can we think about that without memorizing anything but understanding it? Well, we have to know what this means, first of all, to think about it. And what this means is how many halves or one-halves, this is me writing one-halves, make five holes. So, for example, if I have, let's say, five pizzas, right? Let's just get a couple of these. This is one pizza. It should all be the same size, of course. Two pizzas, making five of them. Three, four, and then five. So I have five of these. Um, how many one-halves do I need to make up these fives? Or you could read this as saying, if I have five holes and I split it into groups of one half, how much will I have? Oof. All right? So for two perspectives, they mean the same thing. How many halves make five holes? And if I have five holes, and I split them up into groups of one half, how much will I have? Well, that's what this is saying right here. And just notice that, okay, that's a little confusing, right? And we'll show you how to make sense of it in the picture, but look how much shorter this is in these whole statements. All right, math is much more efficient. Um, so here, let's use the second interpretation. You have these five holes right here. If I split it up into groups of a half, so everyone gets a half of one pi, or whatever, how many pieces will I have? There it is. You can see it, right? Each of these is one half of a whole. You're splitting it so everyone gets a half of a whole. How many groups will there be? Or how much will I have? Well, you still have the five holes, but now you have ten groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's why this equals ten. So I should say here how many how many how many groups will I have. So so why does that make sense and why do we multiply by the reciprocal? Well, 
think about it this way. Every whole number has two halves. So for every whole, I have two. So if I have five wholes, I multiply each of them by two to figure out the total number of halves. And two is just the reciprocal of one half. So really, just using that idea of what fractions are, how there are two holes in each, two halves in each hole, I multiply because I know every hole will have two of these halves, and I'm just counting by multiplying. So if I also do six divided by a third, we can follow the same logic. Well, now we know that every whole number, or every whole pizza, or whatever, has three one thirds in it. So, yes. Sorry here, so assume that each of these are one third. So if I'm dividing six by a third, I'm saying, well, how many thirds make six holes? Well, this is one hole right here, and in each of these, they're going to be three one thirds. So if I want to count how many thirds are going to be for six whole groups, doesn't it make sense to say, oh, well, if each group has three one thirds in it, I'm going to multiply six, the number of holes, by three to get the total number of thirds in six groups. And that three is the reciprocal of one third. Now, what's so nice about this logic is that it carries over into any form, although it becomes harder to describe. So when we see something like two thirds divided by one half, well, this really just means how many one halves does it make take to make two thirds? Or if you had two thirds of a whole, how many halves would there be in that two thirds? Um, and and here we don't have to think about this picture because we know and observe this pattern where we multiply by the reciprocal to find out um, what it means to divide by a fraction. So we do the same thing here. Two-thirds times the reciprocal of one-half, which is two over one. And that gives us four over three. So it tells me that four-thirds, right, and this is where it gets difficult to talk about, but the, the cool thing is we can use a pattern to understand. Um, we, we can say that four-thirds groups of one-half makes up two-thirds of a whole. And that's really terrible to think about, but, but we can still draw it out if we want to. I'm not going to go through in this video. But, but the a basic idea is that this multiplication process works because of the simple ideas here when we're dividing whole numbers by fractions. So again, our, our algorithm, flip that second number, the reciprocal, and then multiply. And if you can't, if you can't remember that, Think about the examples here, like 6 divided by a third, where that means how many one-thirds does it take to go into 6? Well, it's 18, right? Because every 6 has 3 holes in it. Oh, so we multiply 6 by 3, which is the reciprocal of one-third. So our algorithm must be to flip the second number and multiply, and that might help you.